This is 90.3 KEXP and KEXP.org Worldwide. I'm John Richards, host of The Morning Show, and I am very happy to welcome back Noah Gunderson live on The Morning Show. Gonna make its presence known From one monkey to another You can't lose what you don't know It's okay if you get anxious Just please don't call the cops There's a couple things I'm sure of And a whole lot more I'm not There's a sentimental value to the memory of love It's a pretty looking rainbow What does it remind you of? Is it somewhere there's a heart of gold It's never gonna rust For it's a heartbreak But it's never gonna fall Despite all my reservations I've been doing this for years Hoping that some magic touch would finally make it clear When it all comes crashing down I'm still standing here Looking at the same face in the same place Just a different kind of me well, nothing lasts Every other trope I guess it just depends On how much DMT is When I think of Robin Williams At the end of his rope It makes no difference What you're making The reaper makes the fashion So I gather my of the universe inside I hope that someone's listening to the radio this morning though it doesn't really matter with so many come before and who the hell are we fooling no one buys records anymore
KEXP, Noah Gunnarsson live here on the morning show. The new album is called Lover, and a couple of songs from it, Watermelon and Robin Williams. I'm really struck by that opening track, too. Can you, Thanks. I mean, clearly Robin Williams is the inspiration, but it stands for so much more. Yeah, it's funny. I do keep getting asked about that one in interviews, but like, it, that's like the thing that people fix it on because I think it's the most memorable imagery. Right. But it's a whole lot. It's, it's not really about him so much. But. I was going to say, very symbolic. Yeah. Which came first for you? What, was it the feelings in that song or those... those The symbology? Yeah. It kind of like the way I end up writing a lot ends up just one verse will kind of take itself into another verse and then that line came while I was like going to get groceries or something. <laughs> <laughs> like, I was like, what... You know, how can I take this and turn it into something? But are you someone if you're going for groceries and that line goes in your head? Do you have something to? Do I like. Do you have a phone? That uh, you yeah, can, I'll okay. like make a note or something. <laughs> yeah. I was gonna say if you could keep that in your head, that is a superpower. <laughs> Where did you do the writing for this record? Um, all over. I did some of it <clears throat> up in Bellingham. I've been spending a lot more time up there. I have a cabin up there. Um, and then some of the songs are really old that have just kind of been around. We did them. Um, we did some sessions at X where we. Um, like wrote and recorded things and um a lot of it at um andy's apartment um and we just ended up kind of piecing things together over time without like being too worried about what it was supposed to sound like or what it needed to sound like it was just a lot of being creative and um being patient you and i talked uh the other night we were hanging out at a bar mm -hmm. listening to your entire record, which, by the way, a good place to listen to your uh, record is in pretty, a bar. It was a pretty cool bar. It was a pretty cool bar. <laughs> it was the right atmosphere yeah. for, for your record front to back. Yeah. And uh, we were talking about being up in the cabin and being in the yeah. woods and unplugging. And can you talk more about like Just so how important. important that is to you? Yeah, super. I mean, I don't think I realize how important it is until it's like when you quit smoking and you don't realize how awesome or how awful you felt all the time until you've like been away from it for a while. But I feel like that when I go up there, like I don't realize how much just anxiety I carry around all the time. And right. there's like the city energy, um, which I love, but it's my my brain just like needs that break to go up there. And I'm, I know you have your, you have a cabin too. Yeah, we're yeah. way up in the woods and yeah. I, I, I don't realize till I'm there. And then you have to focus on, well, I have to be warm. Right, you know, and I, yeah, like essential things, like, <laughs> yeah. like staying alive. Yes, like what if a bear came? Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. Those kind of things make I'm, you look at the world a little differently. Totally. Instead of just staring at your phone. <laughs> I know, which is, is like, especially now I think so important. We just need to have those resets in order to kind of maintain our humanity and then when you do unplug isn't it odd that you are the weirdo like right the i have that feeling at bars where i'm like you know i get so depressed going into bar and seeing everyone on their phone but then i'm like well if i'm the guy who's not then i'm kind of like the creep at the bar who's just kind of like looking around at people <laughs> yeah, yeah my wife and i are like that like if you go out on dates and you see all these dates with phones yeah and it, yeah it's so sad well it's, i mean I, I sometimes i think about like sinatra smoking at a bar and he looked he looked really cool in that context but he'd be like the creepy guy sinatra is the creepy guy at the bar who's not on his phone <laughs> <laughs> so you talk about um you know you're putting this record together and um uh, you know, taking time with it. And, and it seems like, um, and correct me if I'm wrong, it seems like a transitional time for you. It, it felt like um, the songs and the way you presented it and and just the album as a whole seems like you're heading into maybe different territory. Yeah, I think some of that just has, like I turned 30 this last year and, um, you know, I, with 
I've always tried to like shuck the burden of the singer songwriter, and um, I think I finally kind of got to this place where I've accepted it a little bit more and started to really enjoy it and um, making the process of lyricism and you know writing these really personal songs. Um, it's really cathartic now. I, th I think before I'm like, I want to be this thing and I don't want to be this thing and this, and that's, I think a lot of, maybe that's just being in your twenties, but I think now kind of entering into this season of thirties, it's like, okay, I wanted to be this thing. I didn't want to be this thing, but I am kind of, I am just kind of this thing. So maybe lean into that and be more okay with it and, and explore it. So. It's hard when everyone else is defining you. <clears throat> yeah. Well, and there's like all these preconceived ideas of like what things look like to me based off of my experiences with certain genres of music or, and just wanting to be like taken seriously in, in whatever, in whatever that means. But. Yeah. We also talked about, you and I talked about <clears throat> off the mic, we, um, sort of how Seattle, uh, how you fit in. It's a weird space. It is a weird space yeah. for you. And I, I realized that. Like yeah. you had you had gathered, you know, an incredible you have great fans. I do. You I, do. Yeah. You really do. And they're passionate fans. They love your music. They go to your shows. Nice people. And a lot of that was you just working hard and playing music and not having the attention of press or other things here in town. The usual yeah. Uh, attention that, that that other bands get. What, what do you yeah. what do you think? What the reason was for that was? I so I have been trying to figure this out my whole <laughs> career. I've always assumed it's just because like I pissed somebody off at some point. That's <laughs> like possible. I might have just been rude. Um, I don't know. I think there's <clears throat> I think there's a few things. I think one is the like singer songwriter thing, which is unless you're addicted to heroin, not very cool. Um, and the other thing is, I think there was, because of like my kind of journey with faith as a younger person, and how some of that showed up in my music, I think the, I think there's things, peop, there's, there's elements of the Seattle press, I'm just going to go off, I'm going to go off on right now for like two seconds, but I think they, it, there's, a, there's a distrust of anything that even remotely smells religious, even though I'm not religious at all. Um, and I think that's the dark side of extreme li liberalism. And I think the Seattle, some parts of Seattle are kind of just very, very cautious of associating with anything that like might smell like that. So I think that might be part of it. And then, I don't know, I just, maybe I just was, I had dreadlocks. <laughs> <laughs> I just wasn't cool enough. <laughs> I think we nailed it. I think those are the three. Okay. That's the trifecta. The dreadlocks is the third thing. You're, you, you do look very different than the last I saw. Yeah. I mean, I saw you recently, but I mean the last All this stress, for, man. It's it just, just the hairs. Just, the, the, when did you start when did you start getting a lot of ink? Was that? Was, um, I got my first you? tattoo when I was uh, 18. 18. And I just kind of like dove in. And then like once you start to regret certain tattoos, the only thing to do is just get more. Yeah. So it distracts from the bad ones. Yep. I, I've. <laughs> feel your pain. I literally feel your pain. I've had to do that. I spent like 14 hours in a chair to make up for a terrible one yeah. on my leg. <laughs> I looked into like tattoo removal and it's so expensive. Yeah, it's, like, it's just cheaper to just get more. Just pour them on, man. Yep. Noah Gunderson's live here uh, on the morning show. And I, without going any further, you, could you please introduce this great band? Yeah. Here with We've got Andrew Butler over on the keys uh, from Austin, Texas, formerly of Seattle. Um, got Eric Walters on the bass and guitar of Silver Torches, Peter the Lion, The Globes, other things. Um, <coughs> and we got Alex Westcoat on the drums, of Pickwick, of Peter the Lion, of, of being awesome. Um, yeah, this band is so rad. I'm, I feel very fortunate to be able to play with them. And, and let's talk about the shows. So what's the plan with the record and the touring? Yeah, we start touring on Thursday. Uh, we were kicking it off at the Wild Buffalo up in Bellingham, um, and then we kind of head out for like two months, and we're, we're ending the, the tour back in Seattle at uh, Showbox Market. That's November 16th. Again, the, uh, the album's called Lover. Noah Gunderson's live here in the studios, and you got a couple more from it if you're ready. Yeah. All right.
those high notes.
So good, Noah. Man. Thanks, John. I mean, as, as a DJ, it's like I'm a fan of this record, and I think you've done a brilliant job. As a friend, I'm really proud of you. Thanks. Like, this is a good record. You, did, you. you knocked it out of the park. And this session, one of my favorites. Thanks. Awesome. And, uh, and, and your backing band's incredible. Whew. Yeah. They're sexy. <laughs> I didn't want to say it. Thank uh, you. That's Appreciate my job. It. Noah Gunderson live here on The Morning Show. Again, the new album is Lover, and clearly I can't recommend it enough. And remember the show coming up. You'll be back. I'm pr- pretty nice ending to the show box totally. which i've actually never played really never played it we always do like the neptune or something yeah so yeah I'm excited. Well, well you know save the show box yep. i'm glad it's there for you to play uh on november 16th that show takes place and uh i think that's all i got anything yeah. else we missing anything no, big shout out to Andy Park for making this record awesome. Shout out to all of you for supporting KEXP as well and making these in-studio uh, sessions happen. It's all because of you that we can have bands in here. Thank you so much for listening. This is 90.3 KEXP Seattle. Thanks. Discover great music at kexp.org.